Hi. This video is a little different from the rest in this series. This one's a little more of an op-ed from me personally. And I'm warning you now, I'm going to break my three-minute rule. The goal of the video series is to help you do good journalism. If you understand the law, you can use it to protect yourself and your work. It can act like a wall to protect you. It can keep out anyone who would try to stop you from doing good journalism. That's logical, and I support that. There's a time to fight for your rights. But taking a defensive mindset has downsides, too. The old saying goes that if the only tool you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And if the only approach you have to conflicts, or not even conflicts, but just potential conflicts, is to take a fighting stance, well, you're always going to be fighting. And that's not a healthy way to go through life. This video is entitled Building Bridges because I'm suggesting another approach so that you won't need to be going through life with your fists up all the time. It's fairly likely that sooner or later, student journalists will have some conflicts with school officials and maybe others too. And it's certainly wise to know the law around student media. Sometimes you may have to use it to protect yourself. But I'm gonna suggest that building relationships is a better approach than building walls. So what does that mean? A lot of student journalists and their advisors have an adversarial relationship with administrators or school boards. That's just the starting point for too many situations. That could be because of things that happened in the past, or it might just be a defensiveness or a lack of communication or something else. Whatever the reasons, I'm suggesting that this is not the kind of relationship you want, and there are better options. No matter where your starting point is with your admin, communication can probably improve the relationship. Here are two practical steps you can take to build a bridge with admin, school boards, community members, anyone you deal with really. Step one, find your shared values. What are the important things that you agree on? If you're not sure, look for things like a school mission statement or a statement of values. It might be a school thing or a district thing, but it's probably written down somewhere. They tend to include predictable values like helping students build skills, helping students develop critical thinking, help students be more ethical thinkers, learn to work on a team, collaborate, honesty, prepare them to be good citizens, and so on. All great goals. And guess what? There's no better place to learn those things than student journalism. If your publication has a mission statement, and it should, look for parallels to the school's values. Make a list of them. If your publication doesn't have a mission statement, you can draw up a list of the school's values and write down how you learn those things in your journalism work. Step two, build the relationship. Meet with administrators and whoever else you need to to build a relationship and explain that you want to develop a better relationship. Show them the shared values of the school and the journalism program. Explain that you're really on the same team trying to accomplish similar things. You may want to ask for a reset to rebuild the relationship if there's been friction in the past. It's important to understand that this is not a trick, not a negotiating strategy. This is trying to build a genuine connection so you have a foundation for good communication. So you have to bring a sincere mindset of collaboration. And it's not foolproof. Sometimes people just refuse to lower their defenses and be open with one another. It also may take time, years even to convince them of your desire to collaborate. But once you build this bridge, this two-way communication, when tricky situations come up, you'll have a way to work through it. That certainly doesn't mean you'll always agree. It may mean you have to use the C word, compromise. This is a central idea here. Now, compromise sort of has two meanings. One is a lowering of your standards, and the other is working with someone to achieve something together where no one gets everything they want, but everyone's reasonably satisfied in the end. What does that look like in practice? Let's say you want to do a story about something a little edgy and you're worried the admin won't like it. You might just try to publish it and see what happens. But if you've built a relationship of good communication, you can go and talk with the admin beforehand and explain your plan and that you want to know if they have any concerns. Pro tip, they probably will. If they do, you may have to compromise on your plans. There may be a certain element of the story that admin is really worried about. Can you leave that out of the story and still have a good story, even if it's less than ideal? Sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. It's possible that admin will want to water down the story so much that it wouldn't be doing good journalism. 
If that happened, you'd want to explain your concerns and there could be further discussion. I'm not saying that this kind of communication will solve all your problems, but if you work with them in good faith, over time, you can probably earn their trust and more journalistic freedom, but it might take years. And it's true that some school officials are just brick walls who feel that students are children and don't deserve the freedoms of the First Amendment. If you're in a situation like that, I still suggest that you try to build the bridges and make the best of it. Okay, I have one last note about this bridge building idea. It's critical that you commit to doing bulletproof journalism for it to work. If you don't have very high ethical and professional standards, and if you publish mediocre work, you will not earn trust. So set your standards high and stick to them. You can do it, and you should. Student voices matter.